So imagine if you will that there was like a road map or a path, a well trodden path that the human beings have walked down for thousands of years. Because it just so happens that this human brain has a certain psychology to it. What if that had a certain structure to it and it always tended to unfold in a certain very predictable way? Would it be useful for you if you're trying to self-actualize and trying to get the most out of your life and you're trying to evolve to your fullest potential as one of these psyches so you could see potential blind spots and obstacles that are on this journey? Wouldn't you like to know what the journey entails rather than just doing it the way that most people do? Also, wouldn't it be cool to have a model that would help you to understand why human beings behave in the ways that they do? Like, why are they so irrational? Why they hold such crazy beliefs? Why do they start wars? Have you ever wondered why history is so brutal? Would it be cool to understand why is that happening on a very deep and fundamental level? Wouldn't it also be cool to understand why we have the social problems that we do? And why societies are so paralyzed? Why do they have relationship problems? why we have certain political problems, why we have economical problems, and why we have faction within the society that fight each other, or influence campaigns that against each other, that demonize each other. Have you ever wondered why some people are very rigid and absolute in their thinking, while others are much more open and welcoming to new ideas? Why some people change and others don't? Why some people think in the future while some people are still living in the past. Have you ever wondered why some people have seemingly crazy beliefs and are even willing to go to war over them? Well, Spiral Dynamics is a model that attempts to explain all of this on a very deep fundamental level. It is a model that is created from a several decade of research based on the human beliefs, values, ideas and overall thought structure. And what they found is that the human development has this arc to it and it's like a spiral, thus why it's called the Spiral Dynamics. And as the human evolve for both individually and collectively, they go up in this spiral. As they go up, they gradually take a position of a higher perspective. The man who started this research, Claire Graves, explains it in this code beautifully. What I am proposing is that the psychology of the mature human beings is an unfolding, emergent, oscillating, spiraling process marked by a progressive subordination of order, lower order behavior system to newer, higher order system as man existential problems stage. So this is a really deep topic and you're going to have some mind-blowing epiphanies if you stick with me. I'm not going to give you all the depth, I'm just going to scratch the surface for you here. The topic goes extremely, extremely deep. And if you can master this, then oh man, you're gonna be on the top 001% of the entire global population for understanding human and social psychology. So stick with me here. So in the spiral dynamics model, there are eight stages in this order. Beige, purple, red, blue, orange, green, yellow, and lastly, turquoise. An age stage on the spiral represents a worldview structure assumption about how everything works and the overall rationale for decisions being made. Each stage will have a preference of dress style, uh, language, trends, popular cultural norms, architectural designs, art forms, religious and spiritual expressions, social movements, economic models, philosophies, and overall moral statements and how living should be done. So I will be explaining each of the eight stages in this video and I really encourage you to stick around for the eternity of the video because it is near the end, uh, the later more advanced stages such as yellow and turquoise that you you're really going to get this juicy insights that are going to completely change your life. And I promise you, if you really let it, like if you take it to your heart and learn this stuff, it will change your life. But also, um, as we're going forward, I want you to understand that this is just a model. Human evolution and development is such a complex topic. There are millions of variables at play. Uh, no one model, although a spiral dynamic is a very good one could possibly be taking all of them into account so I encourage you to listen to what I have to say uh, with an open mind but also not believing uh, everything I say blindly because it's just a model so let's just get started with the eight stages beige basic organism survival 
So here what the organism is doing is it's realizing, hey, I'm an organism, I was born, I exist, and I need to survive. So the organism uses its innate instincts to meet its biological needs. So you might think of it as like, you know, very animalistic way of life. So someone at this stage wakes up every day, nothing else concerning them, but how they are going to survive the day. Food, warmth, water, and sex have priority over everything else. One at this stage barely even has a distinct sense of self. Only the immediate satisfaction of survival needs is what matters. So examples of this stage is babies or infants because they are just surviving as an organism. Also the mentally ill and elderly people, uh, they're just meeting their biological needs. Uh, very ancient primitive loose hunters gathered tribes might have been at this stage also but hardly anyone else in the modern world is still at this level of development unless they are severely mentally impaired one begins to leave this stage when survival starts to get easier so when individuals develop some sort of system to survive that constantly worked survival still was not easy but it started to be less of a difficulty a distinct sense of an eye emerged as you realized you were a part of a tribe that you had one role in it and it gave a birth to the next stage Purple, magic and tribal. So while beige was very individual dominated, just being about me, 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 I need to survive, I don't care about anything else. Purple is community dominated as groups of people came together in order to find safety. So each and everyone in the tribe must play their role in order for the tribe to survive. So what characterizes a purple magic tribal psyche you may ask? Well, it sees the world as a very mysterious place fundamentally because it doesn't have a lot of science nor philosophy, doesn't have a lot of uh, advanced technology, just very 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 basic and very primitive. So it's now has time to think about the reasons where things happen and make cause and effect distinction and since they had very little knowledge during this time, they used magical thinking so when pretty much any ancient tribe you'd look at, such as Native Americans, they explain the world through spirits. And you can still find such tribes, by the way, like living in a remote part of the world, like tribes in the Amazon or tribes in Indonesia or Africa. What is the transformational dilemma of stage purple, you may ask? Well, someone is very much identified with the tribe. And what they need to do is actually to let go of the tribe and in this stage you really have to sacrifice your individuality for the sake of the tribe and you're sacrificing for the tribe and as you're doing this you can get this idea as hey why the hell am i giving all my power and why the hell i'm being equal of this tribe why am i not dominating everyone here and if i dominate everyone here in the tribe and I become the leader of the tribe that would be more beneficial to me that would be quite lucrative and so that opens the door for the next stage red egocentric power this is pure unadulterated use of power for self gratification so you have an impulse and you want to satisfy that impulse immediately not to hell what other people think about that or how it might affect other people so for example if i go seize that person's farm and his woman then i'll just go do that to hell to them i don't care about them it doesn't matter to me how they would feel it doesn't matter what the future consequences might be it doesn't matter if i danger myself by going and starting a war with that farmer i just want his farm and i'm powerful I have powerful friends and a powerful weapon so I'm just gonna go ahead and get what I want so that characterizes the type thinking of the red psyche it wants to fight for a physical domination naturally red would seek to dominate their opponents a red leader would do whatever to defend his reputation at all cost and one of the most important things to acknowledge about stage red is they 
make very strong distinction between an us versus them. They view us as a family and the them is hardly even a human. And this overly developed identity of us can lead to things like slavery, genocide, etc. Red also does not take personal responsibility. They always blame others because blaming oneself would be a display of weakness and weakness is the last thing someone strongly in red would do. We still see red in society today although it is very minimal. Uh, I would say gang leaders and dictators are uh, pretty, pretty strongly in red. Uh, teenagers that is going through puberty uh, will likely show some red tendencies. Even some adults like huh, uh, ex-United States presidents like uh, pre Donald Trump has some red tendencies within him. The researchers like estimates that about 15% of the population is strongly in red, but this would be more in less developed countries and less in more developed countries, but red begins to be transcended away when morality take hold. Blue absolutists, conformists and raw civilization. So in this stage, the psyche is sacrificing itself for the society. And how does it do that, you may ask? Well, tradition, rule of law, heritage, family, obedience. These are the values that person in blue really identifies with. There is a strong belief in good and evil. There is a strong belief in a god and a devil. There is a strong certainty that absolute truth exists and that you know the absolute truth. There is only one religion. All other religions are false. Only your religion is a true religion. When religion has unified the region, it is forced upon the people often creating a very absolute ethitorian society that imposes a code of God into the people. The order enforces a code of context that is believed to be the absolute correct way. God says what's right or wrong, there is only one right way, and any other deviation from the path are punished and will likely result in you going to hell. Dogma characterizes the stage, so while religion helped to unify a specific region as it brought together a large group of people, Anyone outside the group is still like an enemy and some of the world's most violent atrocities have come out of blue thinking. People who are against the norms were often killed, the Spanish Inquisition happened because of blue thinking, and a lot of the Holocaust came out of blue thinking. I would say also that Nazi Germany was a combination of red and blue. Uh, but I don't intend to paint blue as terrible since the key aspect of the blue is morality. So the problem with uh, absolutist blue is, blue intent is good, don't get me wrong, but they have this hard time taking in perspectives of anything else outside their religion, which can lead them to thinking everyone else is bad and inhuman, which has led to these atrocities that I just talked about. So let's talk about what is the transformational dilemma for stage blue. Well. Freedom under the blue umbrella causes bitterness, which creates desires of independence and breaking free while blue promotes a sense of purpose, self-confidence and direction in life, the absoluteness of it leaves one with doubts of genuine love and acceptance. This naturally leads one to question the authority and to seek independence, giving the birth to stage orange. So, Orange believes that the point of life is basically material abundance and comfort. And also the point of life is scientific progress, technology. So, Orange dominates the modern world today and also known as a prosperity stage. Also, individualism takes a stronghold here as one has just broken away from the blue herd. This stage is all about being free, living a good life. So, naturally, democracy having right and freedom of expression just came about through uh, orange thinking as morals were based more on ethics rather than religion, Orange places a strong emphasis on capitalism and free markets. Own self-interest is priority in order to pursue material pleasures is very strong. 
The point of life for someone who's strongly in orange is to achieve individual success, which usually means making a lot of money. They might even think that life's report card is based on how much money they can make. And they love to show off their nice things like nice house, nice car, nice wife, and latest technology, etc. in order to display their own success. To others, science and rationality takes a stronghold here. It is very important because it leads to a groundbreaking new discoveries and technologies which have the potential to greatly increase the quality of life and just progress humanity in general. This way of thinking also gives birth to a lot of atheists, but religion can still certainly be a factor here. But it is much less fundamentalist and does not rule one's life like it did in Stage Blue. The United States and other capitalist countries are strongly in orange, I'd say. So the transformational dilemma for orange is materialism does not get you happiness. So all the things that you were doing in your life that you think it will make you happy collective psyche when it realizes that, that material pleasure do not buy happiness once you do it all and once you get it all and you sell yourself for money you then you realize oh shit i'm still not happy what do i do now also you start to realize and become conscious of the fact that your selfishness is hurting other people not as bad as red but still hurting. So you as orange, living in an orange world, getting polluted and getting toxified by all the shit that other people doing in orange, you look around and be like, wait a minute guys, hold on. Can we keep doing this forever? I mean, what happens when the ice caps melts and we all fucking drown because we put so much CO2 into the atmosphere? Then you start to realize maybe, just maybe me being an orange and me chasing for money and material pleasure and selling myself out has kind of robbed me out of my humanity and there's a serious damage i'm doing through this thinking stage orange is transcendent as the pendulum switch back to community green relativistic caring and communal so there is a return to humanity and humanistic values and spirituality. There is rejection for shallow materialism. I no longer care about just getting money and making money. Now what I care about is connecting with people. It's all about relationships and understanding others. It's about peace and love. That's what we need in this world. So. How do we heal the world after the damage that orange people done? Well, we heal it by sharing and caring. Also, we have to recognize the validity of other cultures so we can preserve every culture on the planet. No culture is superior, no religion is superior. They're all different and unique in its own interesting ways. We need to help the poor and make sure they have health care and shelter. So now we're much more aware of the suffering of others in the world. Togetherness, harmony and acceptance derives all decisions. Um, a lot of social justice movements happen here. Some recent ones like climate change movement, Black Lives Matter and so on. What are some examples of green you may ask? Well, liberals hippies, new agers, the whole new ager movement, but this spirituality is often very surface level and it can become very dogmatic in stage green. Spirituality also tends to be very focused on feelings rather than actions. Um, other examples could be social workers, could think of uh, spiritual meetups groups. Actually a hippie is that all they do is smoke weed and live in a van, breach things like, haha, it's all love, we're all one, haha. But then they're broke as hell and they don't actually do much to bring to the table. So, you know, lastly, I could think Scandinavian countries such as Sweden, Denmark, Norway uh, are much more strongly in green. Now, what's the problem with green? Well, 
Green is overly idealistic. Yes, you're caring and sharing and all of this, but the problem is caring and sharing doesn't solve the war problems. You're not gonna save polar bears just by caring about them. You're not gonna feed the poor just with care and love. You need real tangible solutions for that. The intent behind all green actions is very very good, don't get me wrong, but they lack understanding of the systems of the world in order to bring a real genuine change. So you kind of start to wonder what the hell is going on here on earth and existential questions come to the surface and you wonder why is everyone so different, why everyone believes in different things, everyone thinks in such different ways and why people have different goals and passions and why all these people clash you wonder what really is true and what way is the right way as a result of this pondering you begin to realize the interconnectedness of everything how all of the earth and all of humanity is just one system composed of many subsystems and all these subsystems interacting with one another is what makes up the whole and in order to build the best society possible you must integrate to all these systems together and enter stage yellow. Yellow Systemic Thinking so now when you get into yellow oh man you start to see this whole model because now what's happening is now you're starting to see the whole world in much more complex many shades of gray sort of way so life is gray for yellow life is very complex life is also paradoxical for yellow also we start to see people see reality from different perspectives and that there is no absolute truth what is there is multiple perspectives and each perspective might have partial half truth to it so yellow is extremely rare very tiny percentage of population is right now in yellow because yellow takes incredible open-mindedness the kind of open-mindedness that most people are not willing to accept it is frightening degrees of open-mindedness it's also a high level of personal development is required to get to here you don't just get born into yellow you need to really work hard to get up here well yellow realizes everything is not black and white and all previous stages believed that their way was the correct way and that everyone else was either wrong immoral deluded or crazy like a stage of blue fundamentalist christian will always project their beliefs onto red orange and green and think they're deluded for not following the way of god and a stage orange rationally minded fellow who loves capitalism will demonize blue because of their fundamentalist dogma and think their beliefs are stupid because they're irrational and not backed by science and they will also view green socialism as stupid because it threatens their prosperity, individuality, and freedom. Whereas someone in stage green will look down at the orange capitalist and demonize him for how selfish he is and how he doesn't care enough about the people who are less fortunate and why the green socialist is the way he is. Stage yellow looks at the greater system at play. So when someone in stage yellow looks at Trump, rather than hating on him because of his selfishness they will look at what led him to becoming who he is in the first place so what is the transformational dilemma for yellow well yellow is stuck in his head a lot because yellow is building models for everything and what the problem is just building models and having complex gray thinking still doesn't solve the world's problems so you kind of start to accept that and say like oh i have to move past that stage and go to the stage which is above me which is the turquoise turquoise holistic global actualization 
this is the last step on the ladder we reached the top and here you are really concerned about the whole globe here what starts to happen is the rational and the intuitive and the emotional it will all start to synergize and come together and here i think you start to get a taste of true spirituality that really embraces spirituality but not in a dogmatic way in a very open-minded and judgment-free type of way so take a look and see where you are on the spectrum and i'll give you a little warning um, you're trying to beg yourself here, so here's your ego will play a little trick on you and it will say um, No, you've got the order of these stages backward You're not right about this stuff. Well, I have say let's say I'm orange But green and yellow this is not above me like hippies cannot be above orange Or it will say oh nothing above me. There's only me and there is no one above me if you're really stubborn but if you're a little smarter and wiser than that, then the next trick your ego will play on you is that it'll say, Oh, I'm not orange, I'm yellow. I'm not green, I'm turquoise. I'm not blue, I'm green. There is a pattern here, and the pattern is that the ego will think of itself two steps above where it actually is. So blue will skip past orange and its mind, and go to green so blue thinks it's green orange skips past green and thinks it's yellow green doesn't like the idea of yellow so it skips past two stages and all the way to turquoise well lastly let me give you a few final thoughts regarding to this model well firstly whatever society we we're born in you will naturally be taken to that stage where society is in and if you want to develop further you will have to do some questioning some inner work and you will have to go against the norm so try to evolve yourself up to yellow and the way you start to do that is just by getting sense of this model and how do you apply yellow thinking to the world well you have to give away something you've been cheersing for so long is dogmatic rationalism and absolute truth you have to stop thinking of the world as having the absolute truth you have to start to see the world as really being a collection of perspectives and that every belief or idea you have no matter whether it is the most proven science or to social system theory or to your philosophical convictions or to your religious beliefs or to your spiritual connections or any of that those are just perspectives maybe there's some truth to them but maybe also there's untruth to them so that is i know i know that is really a bitter bill to swallow for most people uh, most people cannot handle that and that just takes an extreme open-mindedness but you know you have to put yourself into it and take it to the next level so this was it for the whole model spider dynamics goes extremely deeper than this um, I just scratched the surface for you. I hope all this information was informative for you and I hope to see you again. Ciao.